Dr. Ingrid Matson is Director of Islamic Chaplaincy and Professor at the McDonnell Center for Islamic Studies and Christian Muslim Relations at Hartford Seminary, and she is also the President of the Islamic Society of North America. Ingrid, we hear you now. Well, I certainly feel uh, that I'm surrounded by giants today, and I'm humbled to be uh, among these, these great men. Um, you wrote a book about giants. You yourself uh, will be a chapter and addendum to that in the future. Uh, and I'm, I'm grateful to the legacy of what you've done um, with Martin Luther King. You know, tonight we're here to remember his legacy, but it's important for us to be grateful and to show that appreciation for all those who made his work successful because it couldn't have been done alone. So I'm very humbled to be here. You know, when we hear you speak about being thrown in jail for eating at a lunch counter and being handed over to the head of the Ku Klux Klan, it's unimaginable to many people who did not live through that time. And that's important. It's important for us to grasp that sense of it being unimaginable. Because what that points to is that during that time, in the middle of the struggle, it would have been unimaginable to many of those people that we would be here today. That we would be living in a time when not only would whites and blacks be sitting together eating marrying, being the closest of friends, but there would be an African American running for President of the United States, that there would be a woman Correct. running for the President mm -hmm. of the United States, that there would be a Jewish museum in New York that has such a place of prominence and that people from all faiths are coming to in humility and appreciation. For me, the relationship between faith and social justice hinges on the imagination. That faith gives me that confidence that there are other things possible. There is a reality that is possible that is not fantasy, but is achievable with work, with struggle. But it begins with vision. And I think this is why it is the first four words of Martin Luther King's famous speech that resonates mostly with us. I have a dream. It is that ability first to be able to say that the reality that we're living in, and when we're talking about social justice, we're not talking about simple change. It's not a question of changing one relationship or one law, but of deeply affecting the social structures economic structures, laws at all different levels, regulations, municipalities, counties, states, federal laws. How many changes had to happen in society 40 years ago for us to be where we are today? And many people fall back into pessimism. They say it's impossible. It's impossible for things to change. People will never change. When, when I hear people discussing many of the problems that plague the Muslim uh, global community, I hear things like, well, those are rivalries and hatreds that have gone on for thousands of years. People will never change. And that kind of pessimism speaks to me to a lack of imagination, whether secular or sacred. And I get my confidence, I get my courage and my strength from that belief that all things are possible uh, with God and that we are his instruments and his servants to make that change possible. There's a beautiful verse in the Quran that says, perhaps God will put love between in the hearts of those who you now consider your enemies. Perhaps. Can you imagine it? And what's interesting about this, the, the wording of this verse is that it's those who you now consider enemies. Not that they are your enemy, enemies, but it's a question of perception. 
And you have to be able to imagine, even in the midst of passionate emotions, negative feelings, and perhaps even real struggle that is political, that maybe even be military, that in the middle of that, there is a possibility that one day you will be friends, and not only friends, but people with love for each other. You were saying before we began about how at the end of the Second World War you, you vowed to never speak to a Japanese person, to always hate them, and that changed in you. And how many of us, all of us, have had that experience both individually and in our societies. And for me, that really is the beginning point of, of a successful relationship between faith and social change.